Hi friends, what's going on today? So, um, earlier today I seen a couple of videos that talked about 5.1 Lollipop and how, you know, they were talking about how they were a little upset with uh, the Android device protection feature that comes with 5.1 Lollipop and went on to say, you know, all these little things that I think they really don't or really haven't actually stopped to appreciate this feature itself. One, one of the biggest things that, that I thought was strange was how they actually, because of Android device protection, compared it to iOS and used the thing that Google is um, locking you down. Well, let's just get real for a second. Android device protection is not Google locking you down, okay? It's to protect your phone from being stolen. One of the biggest problems with Android devices is that while um, you could, you know, remote wipe your phone in the past or say like someone stole your Android device and they knew how to get into recovery and wipe your phone and then use it for themselves, they were able to do that. But that didn't protect your investment when you bought that phone. That still gave a thief the ability to activate it on Cricket or on Metro PCS or activate it on Rock Mobile or Team, any one of those small MVNOs. Um, you know, or even do, um, even like use uh, well, the CDMA workshop and change uh, the MEID. You know, it gave them the ability to do all those things. And with Android device protection, it actually blocks that, that, that capability. So what does it do? Basically, it locks your Android device to your Google account. So whatever your primary Google account is on your device, um, if you were to get into recovery and factory reset it, on the initial, uh, what it can be considered the initial first boot after the full wipe, a message would pop up requesting that you log in or that you, you use your credentials from your primary Google account to log in to completely remove the phone from your Google account. So therefore, if you're passing it to a relative or a friend, they're able to go and activate it and put their Google account on it and everything will be fine. But if you cannot log into that Google account that was logged into the phone before wiping it, then the phone remains locked. You can't access the operating system. You can't access anything. And that's great. That protects your investment because then all these thieves out there who are strong, strong arm robbing people up front for their smartphones or stealing it from their cars or, or from their bags or whatever, um, it prevents them from actually being able to use the phone. The phone is brick, the phone is paperweight, can't do nothing with it, it's gone. So with that feature being said, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, well, what if I forget my, my Google logins? How am I going to get back into my phone? Well, you should write your password down to your Google account. That way, anytime you need it, you can go back in there and get it. However, there's another way of obtaining it. So if you say you forgot your password, right? Now, when you created your Google account, if you have, if you had set up recovery on it, then all you have to do is get to a computer, log into your, or go to the Google account to recover the password, follow the steps, and boom, you can change your password. Once you change your password there, go back to the phone, and log into your Gmail and put in your new password you just changed it to because it will recognize it and the phone should unlock. So there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to actually get into the phone. Now from the, the videos that I saw, most of, the, most of these people, some of them were actually people that worked in mobile sales. They worked in cell phone shops. And they said like how they could you know call the manufacturer and all this other stuff and, and nothing could be done. That is the whole purpose of Android device protection is to make sure that somebody who, who gets a hold of a phone that's stolen cannot come to your store and activate it. Because even if you can punch in MEIDs and all this stuff or whatever, um, they won't be able to actually get into the phone and use the operating system and use the phone itself. Basically, that is the whole purpose behind it. Nothing more, nothing less. And for those people that are out there telling people that they shouldn't upgrade to 5.1 because of that feature, that's a very wrong advice to give to anyone out there Especially since you know nowadays, you know smartphones are getting better, high, you know higher grade quality build, um, great specs, and just all out. Uh, there's people out there that are doing th you know these things as going out and breaking into people's cars, stealing their phones, or robbing them at, you know up front, 
especially you know, if you have kids like like young teenagers and you give them you know parents they, they buy them the most exquisite phones like they'll give a 12 year old a galaxy s6 edge or whatever and you know a grown a grown ass thief is not going to hesitate to take that from a little kid but you don't want that thief to be able to use that phone that's that's what you worked your butt off to give to your kid to make you know for them to have a smartphone that they wanted you don't want some someone out there being able to use it so this feature is actually a lot it, it benefits a lot of people more than it does hurt people the only thing that would ever obstruct you from actually getting back into your device or being able to hand it over to a relative or a friend is if you don't remember your password, but you should remember your Gmail password because there are times where you still have to use your Gmail password to log into something that is Google related. So there should be a reason. But if you did forget it because, you know, we, you know, it, we are creatures of habit. Uh, but if you do forget your, your password, there are ways to get your password back. You don't have to just sit there and utter anger and be like, oh, I can never get back into this phone again. That's BS. Yes, you can. Go to a computer and recover your password. And that's one thing, too. If you create a Gmail account, you should create a way to recover your password, like using your significant other's um, email address to, to recover your password in case you forget it. They'll send an email to that email address where then that person can get it for you and you can begin recovering and changing your password. You should always leave a way to recover your passwords because that is how you obtain things through Google. That's how you use their services. So, um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this blog. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. Share this video to get everyone else up to speed. And all those out there that's telling people not to upgrade to 5.1 because of the that feature... Stop it, because there is ways to get around it to get recover. I just named them in this video, so please let everyone else know. My name's Tito with the Law Android. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Let me out. I'm stuck in your pocket.